Hey guys, Flo's here. This video is going to be on the single spender ball lightning meticulous bolts build. And it's built around a couple key items and a few synergizing abilities. Namely the ball lightning with the meticulous bolts quiver. This quiver is going to make the ball lightning travel very slowly, which is going to increase the number of ticks, the number of times that it's going to land damage on a monster. So when I cast the ball lightning, it travels very slowly, and as it's passing through the monster, it's going to hit it multiple times. So that's really effective in terms of the AoE damage potential, which is going to trigger Night Stalker a lot, so that's going to give you an excess of discipline. The discipline is then used to maintain your lingering fog smoke screen, so you're able to, through the process of triggering Night Stalker with the slow ball lightning, you're able to generate enough discipline to maintain 100% smoke screen most of the time. Assuming that there's good density, you will be able to generate plenty of discipline to maintain the permanent smoke screen. And that's one of the key strengths of the build is being able to maintain that smoke screen. You're able to forsake all EHP stats on your gear, even go so far as to dropping the unity to pick up for the SOJ to gain damage. So, you know, you don't need any survivability whatsoever. As long as you're able to maintain smoke screen, you, you will live. So that's the quiver and the key to the ball lightning. Now, you know, not having the rucksack is going to reduce the number of sentries that you can have, and that's where the weapon comes in, the Hell Trapper. This weapon has a chance on hit to summon Spike Trap, Cal Trap, or Sentry. Now, the sentries that are summoned by the Hell Trapper do not count toward your number of sentries. So you can have two standard, and then Custom Engineering allows you to have three. The Hell Trapper is going to give you the fourth and fifth, just like the rucksack would. And now you can combine the rucksack with the Hell Trapper to get a maximum of seven sentries. However, the synergy here is with the Ball Lightning, the Night Stalker, and the Smoke Screen. So you kind of have to have the Hell Trapper to supplement the rucksack to make room for the Meticulous Bolts. So that's the focus of the build. That's the idea. That's what it's built around, the weapon and the quiver. And now... The other key kind of thing to the build is going to be this gem, the Gogok of Swiftness. This is not that popular of a gem for Demon Hunter, at least not in the past, but for this build, it is kind of like an enabler. This gem is going to enable you to hit that 4.15 breakpoint easier, as well as reach the appropriate amount of cooldown reduction to maintain permanent smokescreen. So your smoke screen has a 2 second cooldown and it lasts 1.5 seconds. So mathematically you need 25% cooldown reduction to get 100% smoke screen. Now with the server latency and lag, depending on your ping, you kind of need a little bit more than that. Most of the time people recommend 30 plus, somewhere close to 33 or 34. Just to be sure that your smoke screens are actually overlapping and that there's no latency issues, so you're not vulnerable at all. So, you can see here I'm at 29.66, and then whenever I get some stacks from the Gogok, that's going to push me up well over the 34, which is recommended. And again, if you have more lag or less, you might be able to, you might, you know, need to adjust that. And then... The other thing is getting your attack speed appropriate to where the Gogok is going to bring you to the next breakpoint. And now you don't particularly have to use this gem to get to that breakpoint. You can get to the breakpoint without the gem. And you can get to the appropriate amount of cooldown reduction without the gem. So you could look at getting, you know, better optimized gear, and then you wouldn't necessarily need the gem. Uh, however, it is. It's nice to be able to just throw that gem in there, get that attack speed, get that cooldown reduction. It's it's a good way to solve a bunch of problems, basically. You know, based on the rolls on the loot, you could get it without the gem. So that's definitely worth considering if you have the itemization to support that setup. So in addition to having the appropriate amount of attack speed and cooldown reduction, there are other stats that are going to be 
beneficial to the build, and that's going to include crit chance and resource reduction. Um, having high crit chance is going to be important for your discipline generation, and resource reduction is going to be beneficial for smokescreen spam, casting ball lightnings, mark for death, which is a very intense build on the resources, so having resource reduction is going to be nice. Um, not necessarily required, the build functions and flows and it performs without resource reduction at all. But, you know, things like Paragon for resource reduction is going to be a given. And, you know, getting, dropping the EHP rolls for resource reduction rolls is going to be pretty much ideal for the setup. So quickly to go back over the stats you're going to want. It would be 2.85 pet attack speed or 4.15 pet attack speed, 60 plus crit chance, 30 plus cooldown reduction, and I would recommend 20 plus resource reduction. And then, you know, every the other damage modifiers, lightning, sentry, elemental arrow, that's just going to be as much as you can fit in. Just to kind of talk about the build, you got the ball lightning, it's your primary source of damage. This is what's going to be triggering your Night Stalker, generating your Discipline, supporting your Discipline Spenders, which is your Mark for Death Contagion. It's going to be a 20% damage bonus on, effectively, once you spread it around, it's going to be on all the monsters. You want to put it on somebody that's about to die. Whenever they die, it's going to jump to three monsters near. And after the target that you mark dies and it starts to spread, you can, if you need to, mark something else, but you don't want to cast a new mark until the first marked target dies and it begins to spread. Otherwise, you're going to override your previous mark and then it's not going to start to spread. And you got the Polar Station to trigger Cold of the Weak, Bane of the Trapped. That's going to be necessary. Without the Frost Arrow, you have to have the Polar Station. The Lingering Fog with Smoke Screen, that's your survivability, 100% Smoke Screen through cooldown reduction and discipline generation. And then this one, it's kind of just a utility slot, whatever you feel comfortable. If you want to run Punishment, that works. Focus Mind is also good. Um, this one, it's kind of still up in the air. I feel like it's going to be one or the other, Focus Mind or Punishment, and Assuming you had good crit chance, punishment would probably be preferred. The companion, doesn't matter what rune you have here, you get all of the active and passives all the time. And that's standard with M6. Your passive, you got Night Stalker again for the discipline generation to maintain your smoke screen. And then just damage bonus from there. And uh, you'll notice I don't have awareness here, that's because I'm using this fairly weak Hellfire Amulet that has awareness. Um, my good Hellfire Amulet has Ballistics, which is useless for this build. This is a non-Ballistics build, not a rocket-based build. So it's quite unique, quite different from the all of the rocket variations that most of us are familiar with. So there's the spec. So that's going to do it for the explanation of the itemization and the build the synergy between the abilities. Now I'm going to show some gameplay and kind of talk about what I'm doing while you're watching the footage. So here's some footage of the gameplay and keep in mind my gear is pretty poorly optimized. I'm missing a lot of rolls so this is only Rift difficulty 37 but the build does have potential to go much further. And some things to kind of keep in mind while you're playing the build. You have to pay attention to your resources very carefully. You want to continue to cast enough ball lightnings to keep your gogok of swiftness up. So sometimes it'll fall off, but you do want to try to get it to maintain with the 15 stacks the whole time. So you have to not only drop your sentries regularly and near the monsters to trigger Call of the Weak and Bane of the Trap. You also have to cast Ball Lightnings regularly enough to keep your cooldown reduction and your attack speed at the appropriate levels. And, you know, other than 
sentry placement and maintaining that. You also want to utilize the mark for death contagion, so you want to make sure that you're putting the mark for death out on a monster as it's right before it's going to die, whenever it's near other monsters, and you also kind of want to drag the monsters into more monsters to kind of chain that effect of spreading with the mark for death. And the ball lightning is also casting the ball lightning yourself is also what's going to spawn your sentries through the hell trapper. You're going to be spawning spike traps, cow traps, and sentries. And you can utilize the traps to trigger your call of the week as well. Kiting the monsters through your traps and through your sentries is going to increase the uptime on the call of the week and the bait of the trap. And the the AoE damage potential of the build is very high and part of a, of a technique in order to maintain the discipline for the permanent smoke screen you you kind of want to gather up a nice big group of monsters that way you're getting enough crits to keep up the discipline to be able to maintain the smoke screen and I'm pretty uncomfortable with the build it's it's very different gameplay so uh, this is not like the best of runs, but, you know, just a little bit of gameplay to kind of demonstrate the idea of the build and how to manage. And this is where it would be nice to have punishment. So um, the preparation rune, you can go with punishment, you can go with focus mind. Um, I think if I had higher crit chance, I would be able to run punishment with more success. But again, my gear is pretty pretty sketchy at this point so I'm lacking a lot of crit chance and I don't really generate enough discipline so. but that one ability is definitely a swing spot you don't necessarily need punishment or focus mind you know you could run some other thing there as well thanks for watching hope you guys have fun with this see you next time